It's fair to say that EA have a patchy history with pretty much their entire sports franchise history. Series like FIFA have some sublime entries into the series, and then sometimes even the very next release it can absolutely destroy the series once again. The same too can be said for Triple Play 2000 on Nintendo 64, which was EA's first foray into baseball games on N64, and thankfully it was their last. Now this is one title you've got to be super careful with because the PlayStation version of the same game, or the same name at least, is renowned as being one of the best baseball games to arrive on Sony's console. Triple Play 99 on PlayStation had its big problems, which the studio rightly fixed and it resulted in an excellent game of baseball for PlayStation fans when they got Triple Play 2000. The problem however is that despite being called Triple Play 2000 on Nintendo 64, the game is actually a weird version of Triple Play 99 from the PlayStation, which makes absolute hash of being brought over to the N64. Now look, you know me as I've been doing this N64 stuff here on YouTube for over a decade now, and you'll know that of all American sports, baseball is the one game type that I really enjoy. And so if you're a baseball game fan and you're wanting an expert opinion on this, then this is probably not the video for you and it's a good time to head back to YouTube search to find another video. You're still here? Great! Well looking at the game's blurb, it features all of the major league and MLBPA licenses, more than 75 camera angles, all 30 MLB stadiums, and the 1999 team schedules and rosters, as well as play-by-by -by Jim Hewson, whoever that is. It's the gameplay however which I have issues with. The game has a serious identity crisis with it not knowing if it wants to be an arcade game or an out and out simulation experience. The controls are very simple and so picking up the game there's not really any learning curve when you're pitching. It's just a case of picking a pitch in style using the C buttons and then hitting A to launch your ball. Now I must admit I much prefer the on-screen pitch and hitboxes that pretty much all other baseball games use as it gives the casual player a better understanding and an indication as to where you're aiming. The same too can be said for batting. With no hitbox to move around, it's more or less a case of aiming with the analog stick and hitting A or B to change what type of hit you're wanting to go for. The problem with this though, is that it means hitting is all about timing, and it's something that is very difficult in this game to get to grips with. I played the game for hours and even then I couldn't comfortably feel like I was going to string together a series of hits. It was frustrating when I was constantly being struck out and batting innings finishing far too quickly and then having to go back to pitching which is super boring in my opinion. This isn't helped by the speed at which the game runs. Pitching and batting have an arcade like speed to it, but the slow speed of the overall gameplay is much more simulation based and so it quickly begins to feel like a chore to play. The way I see it is that All-Star Baseball had a baseball fan locked down if they wanted a simulation experience, and something like say Ken Griffey Baseball would appeal much more to those wanting an arcade experience, so it leaves Triple Play 2000 stuck in the middle which won't appeal to either fan. This too runs over to the graphics which are clearly going for a simulation look. The problem however is that they are also very dull. Now personally I think that the player animations are really nice, and they're some of the better looking ones on the console. The problem is that everything else just looks so dull and washed out that it's just not attractive to look at. The PlayStation version also ran at a pretty much locked in 30 frames per second, and the Nintendo 64 version is well below this and it's also much more unstable. Now don't get me wrong, the frame rate is stable enough on N64 most of the time, but there's at least a handful of times during each standard game that you'll see some sudden speed ups in animations, and if you're fielding this can cause missed opportunities for catches. The game's audio though is perhaps its highlight, they must have found some wizardry to bring over the PlayStation's clear audio because things here sound way above many other sports titles on N64. When you hit the ball it sounds absolutely spot on. Crowd noises don't really interrupt you and cool music pieces together accompanying batters taking to the mound which is a nice touch. The commentary too is also used sparingly and at the right moment. It doesn't become repetitive and the delivery of the lines is actually really well done and there's a nice level of realism as opposed to some of the other sports titles in N64 with their, say, flatter commentators. Perhaps the biggest missed opportunity here though comes in the fact that the game has no expansion pack adoption. Considering the game runs in a medium resolution mode, it's a shame that the developer Treyarch didn't put the visuals further by supporting it. 
When you see that All-Star Baseball 2000 made major strides in its visuals the same year by using the expansion pack, then it's a wonder why EA didn't insist that their game try to look as good as it possibly could have done. It appears in many ways that this N64 version was a complete afterthought, and perhaps expecting low sales anyway, EA, well, they didn't really want to delay the game and so they wanted to just push it out, and the focus was always going to be on the clearly superior PlayStation version. In my opinion then, this is one game to pass on. For non-baseball fans, there are better games on the system to try, and if you are a baseball fan, then I'm sure you'd agree that the previously mentioned alternatives on N64 are much stronger games for those who are, well, keen to relieve this era of baseball. And so for today's topic of conversation, what do you think is the console's best baseball game? Perhaps you've played one of the many Japanese exclusive baseball games and so maybe recommending one of those to some of the other viewers in the comments section would be appreciated. As always though, let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments section down below. And until next time.